Um, thank you all. Um, thanks for taking some pictures. I'll need those for reimbursement purposes uh, as well. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm from the University of Toronto uh, working with Saffron Lightning Systems. So I'm excited to talk to you guys about uh, variability modeling with system LV2. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about the context, how this came about. So essentially, uh, there's three parallel things happening. Uh, landing gear system development is complex. Like the we create MVSC models, uh, model-based system engineering, essentially um, system models, and these are um, often very time-consuming to create. And so every time a new RFP comes in, a request for proposals, essentially, uh, we have to create the model from scratch again. Um, and so to prevent having to do that, uh, we're looking for ways to reuse some of that information, some of those uh, system modeling elements, uh, so that we don't have to redo it all over again. And that lends really well to the product line engineering approach, which you know, uh, essentially says you create a product line of these uh, systems, and then you can just essentially generate one pretty quickly. Um, and in parallel to all of this, uh, system LV2 is being standardized. It's not fully standardized yet, uh, but it's on its way. And it's looking to introduce some variability modeling concepts in system modeling. And so we want to see if we can harness that and make sure that if we develop a product line model, uh, we don't have to scrap it when system LV2 comes out, essentially. So the goal is to essentially find a future proof strategic reuse approach to landing gear system development. So um, the point of this work is not to look at the system model itself. Uh, and so we looked at a simplified example from literature, uh, which looks at a full height stowage. Uh, this full height stowage uh, by Wilkins and Forgellini uh, essentially is like a tall cabinet uh, that we put in an aircraft. And um, we're just looking at this little example. So pretend you're a system engineer and you need to develop this product. You have a new RFP, you have to develop this. And so your first question is probably, have we done this before, right? And if you have, then you're gonna go look through the documentation and you're gonna try to find the one that best meets your needs and use some of that information uh, to develop your new design. This is great and all, it's opportunistic reuse. Um, now the problem comes in, if I ask you to make a change to that, then you don't necessarily understand all the decisions that were made back in the day. And so you're gonna have to go back in the documentation and try to find all of that information. Now that's time consuming and error prone. So this part here can be in two different forms. Typically, well, a few years ago, it used to be mainly document based, right? So for every stage, for every abstraction level, you're gonna have one or multiple documents that you're gonna to have to go through to really understand uh, if a specific change is going to impact the design. Um, recently though, it's been a shift to models, right? Using MBSC models. Um, but again, these are individual siloed models for each project. Uh, so you still have to go through each of these if you took information from all of them to create your solution. And so product line engineering go, comes in and says, actually just create one big model, put all of them in here and define the variability within that. And so then you can use this model to configure a new product from this and you only have a single source that you have to go look through for information. Now this is only part of the picture. This is essentially my system model. So it would be here in the solution space. Now, I don't want to have to go through, for example, when I'm creating my new product, I don't want to have to go through the entire model and say, do I want this requirement or that requirement for this safety case for every single thing? Um, you want to make a bulk decision. If I include this artifact, this, this asset, I probably want its requirements and its safety case and how I should test it. You want to bring all of those together. And so to do that, you need an abstract problem space to um, help you filter that information. And so you would define features as an example of doing that. You would use features um, and use that. When you select some features, um, these would be connected. And so with your feature selection, your assets essentially result in a um, 
filtered version of your product line model. So there's multiple ways to do this part, to model this part. Um, feature modeling is the most popular. Uh, it's great at modeling the problem space, not so great at modeling the solution space. And because it's so popular, it has a bunch of tool support. Um, there's another approach to doing this, which is using variation points or a variation point-based approach. Uh, it's often referred to as OVM, orthogonal variability modeling. And um, this approach actually allows you to model the variability within your solution space. Um, so this is an alter another alternative. UML and SysML, um, not so loved in this model community, but essentially uh, it is mainly intended to do system modeling. It's been extended to model the variability of solution and problem space, but it's a profiled version of UML and SysML, uh, which makes it hard to um, interoperate. And so then there's two other options, the decision modeling, uh, which would be a sequence of decisions that you would use to um, help the designer decide what should be included or not. And finally, DSLs, uh, very popular here, uh, but essentially you don't have industrial tool support. You need to develop your own tool in order to use this. And that's very time consuming and expensive. Um, and so what we're looking at is using System LV2. Now System LV2 out of the box comes with some ways to model solution space variability and system modeling mainly. So what we're looking at with this work is looking at how we can use the existing concepts to model problem space variability. So very quickly, system LV2 has system modeling concept, variability modeling concepts, but the important ones are redefinition and constraints, which allow you to do this configurator step of configuring your final product. And so what we're looking at is really up here. How do we model this abstract? variability. And so um, we adopted the variation point based meta model, the OVM meta model to um, system LV2 using system LV2 concepts because it shares some common concepts and it's uh, a language that allows you to model problem space and solution space. So I'm going to go through each section of this little meta model here uh, to explain to you why why, how it looks in practice with the full height stowage example. So this is an example of a feature tree for a full height stowage using SysMLV2. Um, what we use here instead of features, we use variation points and variants. So each variation point is a source of variability and the variants are the options that you have to uh, make a decision at that point. So for example, a full height stowage can have some I can stow some items in my full height stowage. This could be like a feature of my full height stowage. I can also um, decide what types of items I'm going to stow. So there's like a decomposition of features uh, that you can do using uh, this decomposition relationship. So what that looks like here is essentially your variation points have variants, just a variant membership relationship. And then you can decompose that into a tree to whatever depth you want using a decomposition relationship. Now you might ask yourselves, okay, well, there's multiple types of decisions I can make with feature modeling. Uh, like in an abstract way, I could say, well, I need you to include this feature in my, in my product, right? So this would be a mandatory decision type. Um, you can also have optional decisions. So for example, I can or cannot have illumination or light in my full height storage. It doesn't matter. Both are going to be valid configurations. And then finally, you also have an alternative uh, decision type. I can select from a few options, and uh, you would define that using the multiplicity. For example, the items stowed, the choices that I have, I can only make one, and I have multiple choices to make that can either be selected. I could have changed this to two, and then I would select two of those features to include. And we use essentially multiplicity here to represent that. Uh, in OVM, you would use a, a dependency. Uh, it's a, like a type dependency, but you don't have that in SysMLV2. And so that's why we use multiplicity for that. For um, 
constraints. So now I could also say that if I select a cabin attendant seat, um, I also don't want to select cabin crew information. For example, I maybe don't want those two to interact on my full height stowage. And so I want to be able to represent that relationship that I can or cannot select something else. And so this is an excludes relationship, but you also have a requires relationship, which essentially acts in the same way, just another constraint. And so now with all of this, you can essentially define the problem space. Um, but you also have to connect it to the solution space. I have to connect my features to the assets so that when I select a feature, I know which assets to include in my configured product. And so to do that, we use artifact dependencies. These essentially are constraints because again, we don't have a physical dependency link that we can use to connect them. Um, and so we use these constraints. Now this looks like a big blob of text, but essentially if I break it down for you, it says that my, my bill of features um, can include a standard item, standard items as like the feature um, and a standard uh, compartment. If this is the case, then my, my dependency is, my constraint is true uh, and my model is valid. Now in system LV2, all your constraints have to be true for the model to be valid. And so to address that, uh, for example, you see that for the trolley compartment, it's also true, but this is only the first part. So we also have to add this second part, which says essentially, if I do not include a trolley, then I should also not include a trolley compartment. And so by having this uh, dual constraints for each one, we can essentially make sure that the model will always be valid uh, when all of these are in place. And so we see that here, we essentially use a logical artifact dependency instead of a, an actual link. So if I put all of these in practice examples in this original grid that I showed you uh, for PLE, we have our feature catalog um, where we have the breakdown, the hierarchy of, optional, of abstract features and the constraints between them. We have the selection of them. For example, I've selected a standard production and I've st selected standard items here. Uh, for my configuration. This here is the architecture. I didn't show you all the architecture because it would take uh, some time, but essentially this is the uh, final architecture. This is the large 150% architecture, sorry. And then this configurator is the artifact dependency constraint that links them. And so following this, we can obtain this subset of this model. So. What I've shown you here is the problem space variability. Now, to really get this going and get practitioners to want to use this, there's a few things that needs to be improved um, or need to be included essentially in future tools. And those things, and these are the three things. So essentially, you need a graphical editor. Those constraints are really tedious to write and uh, error prone. Like you can make so many typos in that. Uh, and then you don't necessarily know why the model's not valid. So that would really help. The next thing is automatic redefinition. If I selected my features and I have artifact dependencies, my asset, my asset superset, which is on the bottom left, is essentially fully constrained. I've defined exactly what needs to be part of my product asset instance, my final output model. And so it should be able to do it automatically. It doesn't right now. I have to write a redefinition for my features to select them. And I also have to write a redefinition for my asset model to select those. My artifact dependencies act as a validation check to make sure that I've actually properly down selected my asset model, but it doesn't need to be that way. And finally, using those artifact dependencies, it would be great for practitioners to see the impact of a certain decision they make in the abstract space, the the problem space so that they can know what's the impact of that decision. You can visualize, for example, in the textual notation or the graphical notation of system LV2, it would be great if you could see the impact of that change. For example, I didn't select feature three, so asset three is grayed out. So essentially tools don't exist yet, but we're proposing some things that would help. 
And then finally, a few limitations. So Sysmo v2 is not standardized. So what I've presented to you hopefully won't change what it is, uh, but because it's the core concept of system LV2, um, we don't expect it to change. Um, and then the other thing, tools right now allow you to uh, define the variability in uh, associated uh, in different models. So you're not only looking at a system model, but you're also looking at a CAD model or a Simulink model. Um, system LV2 can't do that right now. Maybe with the API, you can connect them and then you can see, um, you can model the variability within those models associated to it. But right now, you can only model the variability of elements you can represent in system LV2. And then finally, tool support is limited. Now, this is not only for system LV2. Everything I showed you today was done in a textual editor in Jupyter Notebook. Um, but it's also for variability modeling and supporting practitioners in deploying this uh, in practice. So that does it for me. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them.